Hey guys, I'm Riker, this is Maria, and this is part two. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So on Sunday, Maria was talking about listening to understand. And in order to have a strong relationship with God, we have to have a strong foundation. And to get that, we have to listen and understand God. So, yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, yeah, it was kind of like this jump from uh, like, you know, seeing a passage of the scripture that was talking about a foundation and the importance of having foundation and yeah. then God really impacting me with like this idea but in order to do that you need to be able to listen to what the Holy Spirit's saying otherwise you're mm. missing the cracks in your foundation right um, and I don't think we normally think of those two things as being one thing but yeah you see it as like uh, if someone is not skilled and they're trying to like build a foundation they're building like the concrete and they're doing all of that well you might know the components that need to be there like you might know okay I know any rebar I know any concrete I know any of my forms um, you know, I know I need to backfill that foundation mm -hmm. so that it's solid. Like I know all of those things yeah. in theory, but um, without proper like instruction, I wouldn't be able to do that on my own. Mm -hmm. like, even though I know those are the things that need to be there. And I think sometimes like we hear the pieces that we know we need to have in our foundation. So we know yeah. we need to know our identity. We know we need to, you know, know the Bible. We know we need to have an accurate view of God. Like we know all of these pieces that are supposed to be present. But I think sometimes we try and like, just take all those pieces and then build the foundation ourselves instead of really taking as much time as we need to sit and and say, okay, I want to hear from the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. as to how. Yeah. Like what? How do I put those pieces together? How do I form that? And I think we avoid doing that in other people's lives too. Like when we're mm -hmm. discipling people, I think sometimes we forget to listen between the lines. Like we are just so busy trying to give them advice that we don't really, really listen yeah. uh, to what's happening yeah. there, right? One of the things I really liked that you said was uh, that God is not a genie. So like mm -hmm. um, we pray for what we, what we want, but we don't actually take the time to understand and listen. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I think we could all have those moments where we prayed for something and we already have decided what we want the answer to be yeah you know like we haven't really like whether it's praying for a certain job or it's praying for a certain house or it's praying for a certain relationship or whatever mm. that is we've kind of already decided what the right answer is yeah and so we're kind of like having this one-way conversation with god it's like okay god um i really need you to step in and help me with this but we've already taken him and put him in this box of but this is what you need to do with that yeah like instead of like recognizing like God is is who we say he is, like he's big and mm -hmm. sees more than we see and understands more than we understand. And when you are going into your prayer life with that in mind, then all of a sudden it changes to like, okay, here is what I see. Here is what my heart's desire is right now. Mm -hmm. Here is all of that. What do you say about that? Yeah. You know, like what is your response to that? What is the best for me? and for my relationships and for whoever fill in the blank is instead of like our prayers become very very specific and it's not like they're mm -hmm. always wrong like yeah but it's just that makes any sense like it's not in the framework of but god you're bigger than what i see mm -hmm. so maybe there's an answer that i'm not seeing that's better yeah you know yeah. so what is that yeah there's that verse in isaiah 55 that says uh verse 8 for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Yeah. So true. Yeah. But if we're actually honest, and I feel like I'm on this like kick of uh, all of our part twos have been going back to this, but if we're honest yeah. with ourselves, yeah. how much of our prayer life and our interaction with the Holy Spirit is from that place? Yeah. Is yeah. from that place of saying, okay, I know this about you. So here's what I'm seeing. Now speak to me about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, are our prayers bringing us comfort or are they actually... Causing change. Co yeah. Yeah. Or like, are they actually in line with what God would want? Absolutely. Like, are they just making us totally. comfortable? <laughs> and I, I feel like it's because it's like a misrepresentation of a lot of scripture. So like there's a scripture that talks about, and again, I'm, I don't know what it is. I have yeah. to look it up. But it talks about God giving you the desires of your heart. Yeah. Right? And the amount of times I've heard Christians or someone say, like, well, God promises to give us the desires of our hearts. It's like, well, you're kind of getting it out of context, though. Because mm -hmm. what God's actually saying, he says, if you pursue me and you get to know who I am mm -hmm. and you're listening to me, 
then your desires become my desires. Yeah. And now I give you the desires of your heart yeah. because they're my desires. Yeah. Instead of it being like, I desire this, this, and this, and this, and now you, as a genie god, promise to give me the desires of yeah. your heart. So I want this, this, and this, and this. Yeah. And they're two totally different places to come from. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. And like, I know that if if you say you're a Christian and you don't read the Bible a lot, it's yeah. kind of hard to have those desires aligned with God. But as, as you're pouring and reading into the word, Absolutely. you begin to uh, figure out those desires, yeah. I think. And yeah. I think that that is a really good, this is kind of a tangent, but I yeah. think that that's a really good um, point there that I'd like to add to mm-hmm. is that we need to understand how scripture was written and what is intended for. Yeah. And so it is good for Christians to read their Bible on their own. Mm-hmm. But again, our framework and our culture looks at things very selfishly that this yeah. is for me <laughs> and this is for, you know, I want to do this on my own. I want to do, but scripture was actually written and intended to be done in groups. Mm-hmm. So to be, um, uh, read and understood in groups of people. So it's good and important for us to do that on our own. I think that's what devotional books are really good for because you kind of bring someone else's perspective yeah. into what yeah. you're reading, which is a good thing. But what we neglect sometimes is that discipleship happens in groups. Mm-hmm. Like the need for our community groups. Well, the reason why we have them there is because we recognize that that to understand the Bible on your own isn't what God intended to do. Yeah, the Holy Spirit yeah. can totally bring revelation through that. But he also set up this model where you're supposed to read it together and pull out the truth together. Um, because someone who's just a baby Christian and you open up like this and you read about like God destroying a nation in the Old Testament and you're kind of going like, <laughs> yeah. oh my goodness, like yeah. is God a God of wrath and that's yeah. just who he is? Like it's hard for you to understand that in the entirety of who God is mm-hmm. on your own if you you um, don't have someone to help you walk through that. Yeah. So, like, it is. It's really important to know God, but it's really important to know God in a group setting, which ties into the other piece we talked about on Sunday, yeah. this need to um, listen to people's stories to understand. Right. Because it's really hard to disciple them if you haven't listened to where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. You haven't listened to the lens that they've put on how they're reading Scripture. Um, because they're looking at it differently than you are. Yeah. Like they're seeing it differently than you are. Their whole background, everything they've been through is is affecting how they're seeing different passages of scripture. And you need to listen to their story in order to understand where they're coming from and not just to give them answers, mm-hmm. you know, which is yeah. two different places for sure. Yeah. Was there any other big points you want to touch on from your sermon on Sunday? Um, always, there's always this application piece and I never want people to miss the application. Right. Like I never want us, you know, you out there, us to go away, including myself to go away and say, oh yeah, that's totally accurate, but not to sit and say, okay, but where in my life have I not done that? Mm, And where do I need to do that better? Yeah. Um, and pick something where you're consciously making an effort. So for me, I talked about it on Sunday. Um, I talk a lot and I know that I like Mm -hmm. to talk I like to teach I like to do those things and so sometimes it's for me sitting and consciously making an effort to say I'm not formulating a response until someone's done talking right like I'm not going to have a preconceived idea of what they're going to say before I've actually heard everything they're saying and that might mean that I don't get to talk because someone else jumps in before I get a chance to formulate something that might mean that I don't get to respond because they just keep on talking. That might mean like, you know, like they, yeah. these things like, but for me, that's kind of like a choice that I'm like, okay, I'm going to work on just listening yeah. and, and hearing what someone's saying, even if it's a minute of silence after they're done yeah. before I have a response, but that I'm making sure that I'm listening to other people. Cause for me, mm-hmm. that's probably the biggest thing doing this sermon where, um, for, like from my perspective where I knew I needed to work on is, yeah. is really listening to others yeah. um, to the depth of understanding, not just listening. Right. Like I listen, yeah. but it's not yeah. like I don't listen. Yeah. But you know what I mean? But <laughs> yeah. to actually sometimes understand. Like, yeah, sometimes it's easy to listen and then you forget two minutes later what Absolutely. someone was even talking about. Yeah. So. I guess we'll end the episode here and uh, I'll see you next week on part two. Like this video if you liked it, share, write any comments. And yeah, see you next week. See you later.